Hello, and welcome to episode 3.4. I am James. In this episode, we will discuss an important phenomenon in phonology. At the end of the previous episode, we learned about lip rounding. Remember that the two allophones can only be used in specific places. Specifically, s can only be used when the vowel afterwards is unrounded, for example, e, and s can only be used when the vowel afterwards is rounded, for example, u. This also means that, more importantly, each allophone can never occur in the position or place of the other allophone. Therefore, s can never occur in soup, and s can never occur in c. As a result, we say that these allophones are in complementary distribution with each other. Complementary distribution is one of the most challenging concepts in phonology. Basically, it states that one allophone of a phoneme can never occur in the phonetic environment of another allophone of the same phoneme. The phonetic environment of an allophone is the sounds on both sides of the allophone. The surrounding sounds often affect the allophone. Remember that the phonetic environment can sometimes change a sound through processes like assimilation, and it can also limit or control which sounds are used, which is the case for complementary distribution. For example, the phonetic environment of s is a rounded vowel, because s is only used if the vowel afterwards is rounded. Therefore, the consequence of this phonetic environment is that s can never be in the same place as s. Let's look at two more examples. Perhaps the simplest in English is the indefinite article a. Actually, we are not focusing on the sound, but on the word. Thus, this is actually a relationship between allomorphs and morphemes, but the principle is identical. As you know, there are actually two forms of the indefinite article, a and an. Because these are two different ways to say the indefinite article, we can say that they are two different members of the abstract mental category of the word indefinite article. As a side note, perhaps this helps to illustrate the concept of phoneme. Indefinite article is an abstract mental category of a word because we cannot physically say this abstract category. Instead, there are physical forms of this category, which can be produced in speech. In this case, these are a and an. This is exactly the same principle for phonemes. Back to complementary distribution, it is clear that these two forms cannot be freely swapped around. In fact, which form you use depends on the phonetic environment of the sound at the beginning of the word after the indefinite article. What is the phonetic environment in this case? Firstly, if the word begins with a consonant, the indefinite article is a. For example, a book. Secondly, if the word begins with a vowel, the indefinite article is an. For example, an apple. These two allomorphs are in complementary distribution because a can never be before a vowel and an can never be before a consonant. Therefore, the phonetic environment limits or controls where these allomorphs can be used. Here is one more example, the English plural marker. Most of the time, we add s to a noun to make it plural. However, there are actually three different ways to pronounce 
the plural marker s. And which form is used depends on the phonetic environment. The three allophones are s, z, and is. The video will now pause. Try to work out the phonetic environment of the three allophones, which determines which allophone is used. And in case you are confused, to be clear, we are not discussing the different ways to use plural in English. For example, child, children, mouse, mice. Instead, this is about different ways to pronounce s. The phonetic environment is the last sound of the noun that the plural marker is joined to. There are three phonetic environments, which require three different s allophones. The last sound of the noun could be a voiceless consonant. For example, cat. It could be a voiced consonant. For example, dog. Or it could be a sibilant consonant. For example, fish, match. The English sibilant consonants are s, z, sh, z, ch, j. Now, can you work out which allophones should be used in these three phonetic environments? If you are not sure, then make the above example nouns plural and decide which allophone you used. Here are the answers. S is a voiceless consonant. So this allophone is used when the last sound of the noun is also voiceless. Also, Z is voiced. So this allophone is used when the last sound of the noun is also voiced. However, there is a third allophone. So voicing does not explain every phonetic environment. Is is simply used because it is very difficult to say s or z directly after a sibilant. So, English inserts a vowel between the last sound of the noun and the plural marker because you cannot easily say a sibilant, namely the plural, after a sibilant, namely the last sound of the noun. This follows a general pattern that English likes to have consonants and vowels next to each other. Thus, when two consonants or two vowels are next to each other, the opposite sound is often added between them. It is the same with the allomorph an. The n was added because it is difficult to say a vowel after a vowel. We can conclude that these three allophones are in complementary distribution because they can never be in each other's phonetic environment. S is never used when the previous sound is voiced or is sibilant. Z is never used when the previous sound is voiceless or is sibilant. Is is never used when the previous sound is not a sibilant. Therefore, the phonetic environment of the allophone, which is the last sound in the noun, limits or controls which s allophone can be used. Thank you for watching.